5b squared, which we definitely should get. Yep. We definitely should get the plus 2. It's, it's whether or not we get negative 7 that uh, you know, we're not sure of yet. So negative 2 times 5 is negative 10b. Negative 1 times b is negative b. Is that right? Is that, if we haven't factored it correctly, because we were supposed to get what? A negative 7b, not a negative 11b. Okay. What can we do about that? Change it to so two and one. We'll put the two here and the one there. So now we still get five b squared. We still get positive two, yep. but we get different b's. Negative five b, negative two b. There we go. Negative seven b is the total. And uh, and we're done. All that was asking for was to factor. We're not solving an equation or anything like that. Mm -hmm. So it's all the way factored, all done. Really? 30. 30. Mm -hmm. yeah. Not yet. Yeah, I guess you I looked at the video, the homework video, it has two views. There are two algebra classes, so at best, one person from each class watched it. Okay? So I really highly recommend that you, if you want to feel more confident, up to speed, uh, watch that. It'll still help you, you know, in real life or whatever. But if 
most of the people, like all of the people in the class watched these videos before they came. I think there'd be fewer questions. But uh, here we go. All right, so that what's really important here is we're gonna, just like always, factor the quadratic and then set each factor equal to zero, which means it's very important that B equals to zero on the other side. It's like number one in solving equations, very, very important. Uh, one side of the equation. That's what it was. The equation has to be zero. And you don't have zero on one side. All this work that we're doing, factoring, all that kind of stuff, makes no sense. It does not work at all. So let's start with that. Let's get this side to be zero, right? How do we get this to be zero instead of one? Subtract one, subtract one. Excuse me. Okay. One thing I should not see, that you should not have, like you subtract one from both sides, you do not do four minus one is three. And this is inside the parentheses, parentheses needs to be multiplied by four before you do anything like subtract from it. Multiplication before subtraction. We haven't multiplied this out yet, so it's, it's outside the parentheses. Well, the whole idea is here, here is that next we're gonna factor this quadratic, but it's unfactorable the way it looks. We, we can't factor it because there's this four here and there's this, this minus one here. There's no factoring that's gonna happen. So we're gonna have to distribute this four. Well, y squared minus 20y uh, plus 16 minus one. Well, y squared is 28y plus 15 minus zero. And then we, we said about factoring this quadratic uh, the problem is, or the first thing that we should do, I shouldn't say it's a problem, the first thing we should do is look at all the terms and see if there's anything we can factor out of all of them. Is there anything? Uh, Three. But a factor of two, you know, factor two uh, is not in 15. Three. About three. Uh, this guy's three, this guy's three. This is four times seven. So that's not three times anything. Um, try as we might, there are no common factors. One easy way to do that is um, like 15. It's, there's only a couple factorizations. 3 times 5 and 1 times 15. Yep. 1, 3, 5, and 15. One of those would have to be a common factor for them all to have something in common. And we go through all those. Uh, 3, no. 5, no. 15, obviously not. Okay. So they don't have any common factors. We're just going to have to factor it. Possibilities. Um, this has to be a y term, this has to be a y term, and we'll plug together. What are we supposed to get for our y squared? Squared? Y squared. 12 y squared. 12 y squared. So if we could do 12 y times y is 12 y squared. Yeah. yeah. But that's not it. That's not all. You can also do 2 y. Yeah. Sounds like 6 y. But that's not all. No, there's no more. 4 y. 3 y. Uh, that's it? Yep. Three times four, two times six, and twelve times one. Those are all the ways we can multiply to twelve. You didn't try six times two? No, probably not. So maybe it is six times two? Probably. Have you tried all the other ones? Probably. Try with starting with six times two. Okay, so the other part of the factorization, we'll multiply together to make 15. Okay? And then we'll try it all out, multiply it all together, see if we get negative 28 in the middle. Well, what, one nice thing is that this is a, a positive, and this is a negative. So the two numbers we're about to put in there, we must both be negative. Otherwise, if they're both positive, they multiply a positive, but they never add up to a negative. Okay. So they must both be negative, so there's no guesswork with the signs, at least. So 
we can either do uh, 3 times 5, or if we do 2y and 6y, we can do uh, negative 5 and negative 3. Let's see if one of those works out. Maybe Derek can save this a bunch of work. Probably. All right, 2 times 6 is 12, y is one, 1 squared. 2 times negative 5 is negative 10y. Then we get negative 18y, and then we get plus 15. Looks like we're lucky right off the bat. Down. We get 12y squared minus 28y plus 15. So there is the factorization that works. We know that it works because we, we did a 2. 1 is 6y, it multiplies to 12y squared. We put in the negative 3 and the negative 5, it multiplies to positive 15. And then we just multiplied all that together to see if the middle term comes out to be what we wanted it to be. So there's a little bit of trial and error there. But it's not just random and crazy guessing. It's informed. It's educated guess. 2y minus 3? 3. 3, 6. y minus 5. That factorization is going to be the most challenging part of the whole problem, factoring it down like that. Um, so what happens next? What do we do next in the problem? What, Derek? Really? Yes, exactly. And 6 equals 0. And also, or 6y minus 5 is 0. Before we move on, because this next part is, is pretty simple, you should be able to do that on your own. I'm going to ask you, as I have many times, why can we do this? Not because it's the next step, but because mathematically it has to be true. Did somebody put that into a, a statement or a sentence or two? This is why at this stage we can set that equal to 0 and that equal to 0. Why is that? One of them, one of this or this, right? This parentheses or this parentheses had to be equal to zero. Now, why is that? If you prove that one of them has to be zero. If you plug it in, it equals zero. Plug what in? <laughs> this? Yeah. Like, if you made this zero? Yeah. Is that what you're saying? What do you mean by plug it in? Plug in the equation. Well, we haven't, we haven't finished yet. We haven't said why is equal to this. Let's go back to what you said just a second ago. One of these has to be zero. Why is that? Why does one of them have to be zero? Because it equals zero. Okay. And we're, what we're doing to get zero is multiplying these two things together. So we, we talked about a times b equals zero. A number times a number. This is a number, that whole thing is a number like a, and this whole thing is a number like b. When you multiply two numbers together and you get zero, the only way that can happen is if one of them is zero. Neither of them is zero. This is impossible. You can't multiply two times one, or five times seven, or six times three, or any other combination than one of them being zero and get zero when you multiply. So one of them has to be zero. So we set them both equal to zero and we solve. We get three halves. We get five sixths. Okay. And as uh, as Connor said, if we plug either one of these into the y's of the original equation, it'll be true. So we plug in that 5, 6 in there and there. Do all the arithmetic there, and it'll be true. The left side will be 1, the right side will be 1. Is that a good answer? Yeah, really? Pretty good fit. Do we need Any other board? questions? Board. What? 24. 
One side is zero, so that's taken care of. Uh, now we work for factoring this. First thing in factoring would be to look at all the terms and see if they have anything like a two or a five or whatever in common. No. So the only factors of three are three and one, so all of them would have to have a factor of three. Which of these do. So we can't factor out anything. Two parentheses next to each other that multiply together to make the original. What's going to go there and there? 3w. 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 And? 1w. 1w. Okay. okay. And then, here and here, we need two numbers that multiply to make. Seven. 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 They multiply seven. Okay. They want to multiply everything together. So, which one, which one goes here? One or seven? Seven? Yep. Seven goes here? And one there. Okay. So you have to multiply it out and make sure that it works. And if it doesn't, then we need to fix it. Checking 3w squared, 3w times 1, 3w, 7w times, or 7 times w is 7w, and 7 times 1 is 7. Now that's 3w squared plus 10w plus 7. That's wrong. Switch them up. Wrong. So we're going to switch it. 7 there, 1 here. We'll find that out. 7 times 3w is 21w, plus 1 times w is 22w. Yeah. 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 Right. Checks out. equation to solve and do it on your own, but I'm going to have the steps set in for you. Okay. And I'll come around and help you out. Then we'll have a little review. See if there's anything in common. There's not. No. Five is, uh, yeah, whatever. There's nothing in common there. So we factor it. All right, let me, maybe I'll take this and. Alright, 
So we're working on factoring, and the thing that we need to remember is there's a little bit of trial and error here. We, we put things together in whatever combination might work, and then multiply it back out to see if it does work. So the first thing we need to get when we multiply these together is that this times this needs to be 4x yeah. squared. So how can we get 4x squared? 4x, 4x times 4x. 4x. 4x times x. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And even if you didn't do this, we need to realize it's possible to do it Another way. Can you do 2x? 2x. Two and 2x. And 2x. Oh. Or can you do All right. So there's, okay. so there's these two possibilities just for the x squared part of it, just to get 4x squared. And then we look at the last term, the constant term. And we know we need to get negative 5 when we multiply this number times this number. How can we get negative 5? Plus 1 minus 5. Plus 1 minus 5. Or 4x minus 1, x plus 5, or 4x plus 5, x minus 1, or 4x minus 5, x plus 1. So let's just look over this real quick. So for 4x and x, we've listed all the, all the possibilities to get two numbers that multiply to negative 5. Either we do 1 times negative 5 get negative 5, negative 1 times 5 is negative 5. If we switch the 5 and the negative 1, uh, that will produce a different product. So we need to explore that possibility. And, uh, and then we switch the negative and the positive down. Okay. Same thing over here. Same combination, same possibilities for multiplying to 5. 1 and negative 5. Uh, we would do negative 1 and positive 5. Positive 5, negative 1, uh, that's 2. 2x minus 5, and 2x plus 1. Um, but we know, since this is 2x and this is 2x, like switching the negatives is kind of what we make the exact same thing. Right? If I take this, put that over there, take this, put it over there which I can do, it doesn't matter which order I multiply them, we get the exact same thing. So we can uh, get rid of that redundancy. So here we go, six possibilities. Okay, first, I'll multiply one out that I know doesn't work, and then I'll multiply the one out that does work. Let's choose this one. 2x times 2x is 4x squared, of course it is. That's why we pick those numbers. And 1 times neg or 5 times negative 1 is negative 5, just like we knew it would be. Then we get 2x times negative 1 is negative 2x. 5 times 2x is 10x. That comes out to be 4x squared plus 8x minus 5, but we wanted negative 19x. So that is up. <coughs> x is 4x squared. Uh, we'll do 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. 4x times negative 5 is negative 20x. And 1 times x is positive x. So we get 4x squared minus 19x minus 5. So that tells us that this is the correct factorization. So we factor this as 4x plus 1 times x minus so we factored the quadratic. That's what all that did. The quadratic. Now we said each factor equals zero. Four x plus one equals zero. X minus five equals zero. X equals negative one fourth. We subtract one and divide by four. X equals five when we have five equals five. Show me that you can do it on your own. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's do that. Let's put everything away. All right, so one side needs to be zero. 
So we add 6 to both sides, giving us 0 here and plus 6 on the left side. Look for something in common, nothing in common. We don't have a 5 in common or a 3 in common or whatever. Try to make this one fairly easy to factor, like not a lot of choices of how to factor 5 or 6. Like these two terms right here need to multiply to make what? Yeah, these two need to multiply. Yeah, you're right. I mean, this right here and this right here. 5x to the second, so we can only do 5x times that. These two parts, you see, they need to multiply to make 6. Okay, let's try uh, 3, 2. Try. And check it. See if that's, if that's correct. You get 5x squared. We get plus 6, of course. We get plus 10x and plus 3x, and that works. 5x squared plus 13x plus 6, just like we wanted to get. Let's check. Now that we know that we factored it correctly, it's the almost last thing we do. What, Lily? 5x plus 3 equals 0. Or x plus 2 equals 0. That could also be a possibility. x equals negative 3 fifths. x equals negative 2. Does it have the right numbers, but it's not negative or the internal? Is that like. That's not right. Why is it negative? When we solve this, we uh, subtract 3 on both sides. So we get 5x equals negative 3. And then we divide by 5 on both sides, so we get negative 3 fifths. <coughs> so if they have the right numbers but not the right signs, it's 3 out of 4. They didn't have years. Scored out of 4. <laughs> Say what? I'm going to give you three multiplications to do. Okay, and they're going to be, you'll notice there's something in common among all of them. And we'll see what's, what they have in common when you multiply them out, like the pattern. Okay, so each of those pairs together, see what you get, and we're going to talk about what is uh, what patterns they share. Okay. So before I write this down, can anybody tell me like, what happens similarly among all of them, Ethan? They all have zero. What? Zero. What? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Like zero x. No. Zero x. There's no x's left when you get done, yeah? You get x squared. Plus 3x minus 3x minus 9. These cancel each other out. x squared minus 9. Here we get 2x times 2x is 4x squared. Plus 8x minus 8x. Those cancel each other out. Minus 8. I'm oh, sorry, minus 16. Yeah, come on. And 3x times 3x is 9x squared, plus 21x, minus 21x. They cancel each other out, minus 49. So 9x squared. Don't. Okay. Uh, so now let's, let's go back up to here, the, the things that we actually multiplied together, the factors. So what's similar about all of these three pairs of factors? What's the same about this pair and this pair? What? 
Negative and positive. Negative and positive is the only difference between the two of them, right? They're identical, except for that one of them is positive, one of them is negative. The original sign is the opposite. Okay. The word for that, there's a word for that. Um, when you change the sign in the middle from positive to negative, vice versa, you call those conjugates. <coughs> So if they're identical except for the middle sign is changed, then you call those conjugates. When you multiply conjugates together, the middle thing cancels out. You get exactly the same thing except for their opposite. They cancel each other out, and you get no middle term. It's always true of conjugates. That's the way that works. Okay, then what do you notice is similar about what we can, like what can we say about the numbers that are involved in the final product? They have squared x. <laughs> they have a squared x. Yeah. What else? There, there's all yeah, they all have a minus something. Then none of them came out to be plus. Square numbers. Square numbers. Good. Okay, because they are all minus, they're all what we call differences. Mm -hmm. Difference. Call the difference because we're subtracting. When you subtract, you call it a difference. It's a difference of something else that, that uh, I don't know who said it exactly, but the kinds of numbers we have are square numbers. That's what we call the difference of squares. All of these are examples of difference of squares, the difference of square pattern. So let's get it. Uh, an example from one of you for going what I think is like the easy way. And that is, I want you to give me two factors like I gave you in the beginning that will multiply together and result in a difference of squares. Can somebody give me that? Different from my examples, of course. 4x plus 60. 60? Yeah. Whoa, okay. And then 4x minus 60. That'll do it. That'll definitely be a difference of oh, two squares. Yeah. Can we multiply it really fast? No. I think so. Probably. Mm -hmm. Right? This whatever this number or this number or this number is just the square of that. Right? So what will we get? X squared? 16. 16. Are we gonna have to worry about the middle numbers? If you notice that you're multiplying conjugates together, then no. So then 60 times 60. Minus what? Minus 100. Just What's 6 times 6? 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. 36. Slightly harder way. Oh, no. The other direction would be give me the quadratic, the whatever squared, whatever, whatever, that will factor into these conjugates. What? X squared. What? what? X squared? X squared. Uh -huh. squared. Uh, 16 plus 16. Plus 16? There you go. Minus 16. It does need to be minus 16. Let's, let's look at this though, because I was going to bring it up anyway. So, X squared minus 16. Yes, works. Yes, yep. my X squared plus 16. Let's see what. Maybe we can factor this some other way. Okay? Can we give it a try? We know x and x for sure. Mm -hmm. okay. X times x is x squared. Plus. Plus. Gotta, okay, so if that's plus, then it's got to be plus because we got to multiply to make a plus. All right? Four. 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 Well, what happens? You get x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 16. So we get 8x in the middle. We're supposed to get no x's. Okay. Try negatives. What happens? You get negative 8x. Okay. What's that? If they're both negative? If you make them both negative, you'll get negative 4x, negative 4x. They add together to make negative 8x. So what? 
You get positive 16. You do, yeah. but you don't get 0x, like you're supposed to get no x terms. Right? Yeah. You're supposed to get no x terms. Uh -uh. But whether we make it both positive or both negative so that we get a positive 16, we don't get a 0x. Uh -huh. We don't get a cancel out of the x terms. Okay? So it's very important that it's minus every x squared minus 16. How will this factor? Minus 4. Minus 4? Four? 4x. Four x. x. X minus four. Yeah. Minus four. X minus four. Plus four. Plus four. Yeah. Plus four. Come on up. Is that good? I know. It's pretty funny. Yeah. That's okay. Good you. Can somebody give me another example that's going to factor nicely? Something other than x squared. Give me a number in front of x squared. Five four. 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 X squared. Four x squared. Minus. Minus. Thirty six. Thirty six. Okay. Yeah. Crazy. Uh, Nathan. Can you factor this for me? Uh, Using the squares pattern? I want to say <laughs> x um, <laughs> can you give me a second? Two I can. X. 2 x. 2 x. <coughs> So big to see. Do you know what you're looking for? What? What time does it sell? What? Did you find that number? Thirty-two. Thirty-two x squared, or not x squared? Just thirty-two x. And thirty-two x. They multiply together to make thousand twenty-four x squared. Okay. And. We should be able to do a plus and minus the same number that multiplies to 25. What, what's that number? 15. Okay, good. This one. How can you tell immediately that you can't factor this using the difference of squares? So plus that one with that double. Okay, process of elimination. If you didn't have a process of elimination. Now let's go back to what Connor said. He said, what number times itself gives you 1,024? What number times itself gives you 2,048? Can you find such a number? No, 1,024 times 2, but not 1,024 times 1,024. Just kidding. What do we call that number that multiplies by itself to get another number? A square. What? A square. The square root. Root. Does 2,048 have a square root? No, it doesn't. Why? It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, lots of numbers don't. Okay. Well, it has a decimal square, but it doesn't have a nice round square. But just before I let you break, can we factor something out of both of these? Do they have a common factor? Two. One thousand twenty-four x squared minus a hundred. Now that we've talked about that, two. 
Yeah. Now what do you say? Is 1,024, is that a square number? Uh -huh. We already know it is. Yep. 32x, mm -hmm. 32x. Is 100 a square number? Yes. What's the square root of 100? 10. Plus 10 minus 10. So sometimes when you have something that's not a difference of squares, you can factor something out, it makes it a difference of squares. Right? You get rid of all those extra factors, and what's left is perfect squares. Right. Uh, I'm going to give you a couple of more to factor, make sure they're all on the same page here. Square two minus one. But just like with this one, is there a factor that the two of them have in common? Uh, two. Two. Factor out the two, we get <laughs> nine. nine x squared <laughs> minus twenty-five. Twenty-five. Now what about this one? Well, then you got three x. You got three x. Yep. You got the two out here still. Yeah. Minus five, five plus. <laughs> Minus five, three, plus five. So remember, you may be able to turn it into a different squares if you factor out any common factors. Good. We can get real tricky. Oh shoot. Uh, Sixteen x to the fourth minus. factor equal to zero. Crap, my heart. We solve for x. Right. Three, three, five x equals negative three. X equals negative three fifths. Five x equals three. X equals positive three fifths. Not surprising that we, our factors are, they differ by just a plus and a minus, so our solutions differ by just a plus and a minus. Okay. 9.7 today, that's all.